It is the appointed time and we have a quorum. We now get started and we should end at 7 p.m. And if necessary, I will extend the meeting by at most 15 minutes. I'd like to remind members that if you have direct or indirect pecuniary interest relating to the items under discussion today, please disclose the nature of that interest before you speak according to ROP 83A. And also with regard to ROP 84, there are stipulations with regard to conflict of interest where um, there is the nece necessity of a vote. First of all, FCR 2018-1989. This is a, a list of recommendations of the Establishment Subcommittee made on the 22nd of February 2019. And this is for the creation of one supernumerary post of Senior Principal Executive Officer in the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department for the implementation of the regulatory regime on private columbaria. The panel has spent over an hour on this item, and the administration has already provided supplementary information. To answer members' questions, we have the Under Secretary for Food and Health, Dr. Choi, and his team. First member to ask a question, Dr. K. K. Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. First, I support the creation of this post, but I like to ask a question. One of the important duties of this post is to assist private columbaria to seek a license. As we all know, there is a problem with these licenses now, and uh, that is, I don't know for what reason private columbaria operators are not submitting all the necessary documents for application. So they, their applications are held up. The most difficult part is that during the interim period, the private columbaria may still sell niches. Secondly, if they have not been submitting documents and then the administration does not impose a deadline, then these people who flout the planning and land provisions, they will continue to operate without having to get a license. In other words, they will be illegal private columbaria, and they may be occupying government land. Now, whether they can really sell niches, it depends on your enforcement. but these private columbaria are clearly breaking the law. I think you should set a deadline for them to get a license. If they still do not submit all the papers by the deadline, then you should just process the application on the basis of the documents submitted. Say you should reject the application for a license. Then at least consumers and uh, the bereaved family members will not fall into any trap. Mrs. Lai, thank you. You will understand that the ordinance is to tackle some historical legacy problems. We have already frozen the scale or scope of these private columbaria if they are pre-ordinance. Dr. Kwok, you are saying that for these applications that are processed or being processed, there is a grace period, and during the grace period, they cannot sell niches. We are enforcing the law all the time. We will inspect them on our own initiative, and we will investigate when we receive a complaint. There have been cases where we have found uh, illegal selling of niches. We have prosecuted these. As for setting of a deadline, With regard to pre-cut-off columbaria, it is set down in the law that the deadline was the 29th of March last year, and it is now one year after the deadline. And if they still do not comply with all the conditions and if there are outstanding documents, we are already submitting these applications to the board for a decision. We have dealt with two such cases in April, and we are in the process of submitting these um, cases. Well, say, for example, they have not submitted the TSOL. We will be submitting these to the licensing board to make a decision. Well, let me clarify one point. You mean the 1st of April this year was the deadline? 
Now I don't know how many of them are delaying the submission of papers. What I don't want to see is um, continuous delay. And are you telling me, the head of the private Columbaria Affairs Office, that in fact you would just declare them to be illegal and they would be invalidated? Is that right? We yes, we have started to process such applications. First, we'll tackle those in multi-story buildings, for example, those in Hong Hum, because they pose a direct impact on people living nearby. Our first and foremost priority is to tackle these applications um, about which documents are outstanding, and uh, we know that they do not comply with conditions. What about? The remaining ones, some are within monasteries or temples. We will have to deal with them step by step. Well, I'm telling, asking you about a deadline for these remaining cases. You have talked about Hong Kong multi-story buildings, but what about the rest? We are going to submit these cases in a gradual manner to the licensing board. And as long as they do not submit all the documents, we'll reject their application. So we do not need to set another deadline. You mean you will just go on processing these applications? Is that right? Uh, even if they still delay the submission of papers? Sorry, let uh, Dr. KK Kok have the microphone. So you mean still if they do not submit papers, you will just continue to process them, right? Can I say within a year? you will be able to complete your processing of these cases where you have granted a, a grace period. Well, if they still are committed in submission of papers, we will still receive them and then we'll submit them to the licensing board. And then the remaining ones will also be submitted to the board for a decision. Next one, Alice Smack. Chairman, like other members, we don't understand why that ever since the implementation of the ordinance, is it that you have only issued one license? We have just approved three. So many, huh? How, how many private columbaria there are? Yet you have taken so long to issue three licenses. On many occasions and forums, uh, say I operate a a street station, and recently I was at a graduation ceremony of a secondary school. One parent asked me that same question. They bought niches <coughs> in private columbaria, but since there is not a license, even if they have bought the niche, the ashes or um, interment cannot be put in the niche. So I'm asking you. You are asking for the creation of a supernumerary post. Can you tell us whether this will lead to a faster processing of applications? Can you then be able to issue licenses more quickly? Also, you say some of them do not submit papers. But then there are people who are very eager, and they have been submitting papers as required. However, you have been taking a long time. When can these private columbaria get licenses? The public are suffering because they have paid for the niches and yet they cannot put their ancestors' ashes in the niche. Mrs. Lai, first, if um, they want to apply for a license, they know very well what conditions they have to comply with. And in fact, it covers a big area, including land planning, the structure, fire safety, the title, and the possible use of the site, and also people flow, traffic flow, etc. And many different issues are involved. So it's not hard to understand why it takes time for applicants to comply with all the requirements and conditions. Our office does the coordinating work, and we liaise very closely with the applicant and departments which are tasked to vet the applications. And we also hope to expedite the process. This particular post that we are asking for will be helpful 
in the process. We hope that we can improve our workflow so we can streamline the process. Chairman, we were in Hangzhou. And what, what did we see? Uh, people just had to apply once. You started to accept applications last year, and now there are people who have been going to your office many, many times. And residents of Hong Kong have paid for the niches, and yet there is no license, so no interment can be done. And you have only processed three licenses in an entire year. So are you telling me that you can expedite the process now that you will have this post? The head of the office. Well, if we can have this post, I'm sure there will be a lot of help. Next, Leung Yu Chung. Chairman, just now the head of the office said that this post is definitely going to be helpful. But my information tells me otherwise. I called up um, your officers to ask why it takes so long. And they say it is not because of your process or a lack of manpower on your part, but it is all due to the late submission of papers. The thing is, why is it that applicants continue to fail to submit documents? Well, there are many different reasons. Some of them deliberately delay the process uh, because they don't want to take up more responsibility. And then, as you said, Mrs. Lai, they need to undergo a very major uh, project before they can comply with the conditions, and therefore they want to drag your feet because they don't want to embark on such a big project. I don't know how, therefore, this supernumerary, supernumerary post can help you with the process. Secondly, people would have bought the niche and the law says that they can put the ashes there temporarily, but then this is not allowed by the applicant. In one case, the applicant finally agreed, but then it is said that the descendants cannot go there to pay respects to the ancestors. Now, if that's the case, what good uh, does it do to the descendants, even if the niche can be used? So you are telling us that the applicants can still accept ashes, but then the applicants are telling the descendants that this may stand in the way of their application. And yet you are not doing anything about this in the interim. Does it mean that this extra pose will help you deal with this aspect of your work? So I'd like to hear from you in a more concrete way. Don't just give us a vague statement saying that definitely this will be helpful. You must tell me how because it is very often that applicants are not submitting documents to you, so you cannot process their application. And I tend to agree with Dr. K.K. K. Kwok. He asked you the question, but you just beat about the bush. Can you just announce a final deadline for the submission of papers? Otherwise, people will continue to drag their feet. And then you say you will just submit the applications to the board in a gradual manner, but then this is not fair because people would not know that you have already processed the, processed the application. So you have to tell me how this post is going to be helpful to your work. Head of office, Mrs. Lai. Actually, there are applicants who are very eager to comply with the requirements. And departments, therefore, are vetting their documents as they come in. If it is found that the documents are not clear or there should be further submission of papers, there are those applicants who are very eager and they continue to submit papers. And also, if they have to undertake uh, projects or works to rectify certain parts of their operation, there are those who are very eager and they do undertake these projects. If we can have this supernumerary post, then it, it can help coordinate other departments to tackle complicated issues and to find workable solutions. Sorry, please. I don't think this post can help you do any coordination because if the works are not completed by an applicant, how can you do any coordination? They have to submit a certificate to you. Before that is done, you will not just process the applications. No matter what you do, you are not going to be able to process the applications. 
So you should actually set a deadline for all applicants and even society to know that they have to do a better job. I don't think coordination will be meaningful uh, without a deadline. Head of office. Well, there is another type of applicants, as mentioned by members. These people can be very inert and laid back. And in fact, we are already dealing with this type of applications. We will submit them to the licensing board. If by that time the documents are still outstanding, then their applications will just be rejected. We have started to conduct public meetings to tackle these applications. On the 11th of April, we process two cases, and then we will be getting on to other cases which do not comply with requirements. Will you consider announcing a deadline? Well, two members have asked the same question, but you have not answered it. Will you announce a deadline? No, there will not be another deadline. Because when applications are submitted to the licensing board, applications that do not comply with requirements will be rejected. What if they now supplement documents? Well, if they are in, examined in a public meeting, we will not accept further papers. But when would people know when their cases will go to the um, licensing board? Uh, we will inform the applicant. Please give the mic back to Mr. Leung Yu-chung. But this is unfair to the public because you don't tell people when the Applications are submitted to the board, and people don't know by what time they have to submit documents. I think this is not fair. That's right, Mrs. Lai, this is not fair. Some people may have submitted their applications very early, and, and yet they do not know the deadline for submission of papers. Why don't you really set a deadline for everybody? Because people don't know the order in which you are going to submit their applications to the board. Can you please answer again? There are 133 which are being processed. None of them have submitted all the necessary documents. If we now set a deadline, then does it mean we should submit them all at one go to the licensing board? Well, that is not going to be practicable. But we will act quickly to submit the applications without all the papers uh, to the board for processing. Dr. Helena Wong, Chairman. Mrs. Lai, the head of the Private Columbaria Affairs Office is with us. You are asking for the creation of a post under you uh, to help you do your work and then you also have the licensing section, the executive section, the licensing section, and also the secretariat. And your two-tier structure will become a three-tier structure. So what is this post going to help you do? If this post will take up your duties, then does it mean that you will have no duties to execute? How can you justify the creation of another post to help you do your work? And in fact, under you, you already have four sections helping you do your work. Why do you need another one tier in the middle? And also, this is not going to be a permanent post. You are asking it to last only until June 2022. In the coming two years, well, um, there would not be a whole three years. Why do you want this middle tier to help you do your work? And what is the duty list of this post? What part of your work will be hived off to this post? Head of office. Thank you. Well, operational-wise, this post will help me review the original workflow to see whether we can streamline any part of the process. So um, he or she is going to do this systemic examination. Secondly, we are now starting to issue licenses. Uh, we are going to issue these TSOL. And when we monitor whether the holders of designated 
documents are complying with the necessary conditions, we need to go through certain processes and apply certain mechanisms. And in fact, we have to follow certain enforcement guidelines. The post holder will be able to assist to formulate um, the uh, guidelines as well as to put down to um, set up the um, mechanism. We're talking about 133 columbaria involving about 300 applications. It involves a lot of uh, cross departmental issues. If we have this post, the post holder will be able to take up the work of liaising with other departments in order to find solutions. But there is this uh, three tier structure in place. The middle tier, that is uh, this newly created D2 post, is doing what you are supposed to do, or is it the case that um, um, this will be taking up um, the, the job of the enforcement team, of the licensing team, of the secretariat, as well as uh, the branch administration unit? Both. The post will be in the middle tier. So the post holder will be able to share the workload of the higher tier and the lower tier. The work done can be more in-depth and can be uh, more extensive. But it is the D3 post, so in relation to setting up the mechanism and to streamlining the um, process, wouldn't you be a more suitable person to do it? Workflow and mechanisms involved, administrative procedures, guidelines, um, steps. The post holder will have um, rich experience in administrative work. But the problem is that your experience will surely be uh, more than this uh, D2 post. This D2 post is under you, so there is no reason that uh, this uh, the post holder will have more experience than you do. How come that uh, you are not the person be you, because uh, you have more experience in formulating the guidelines and uh, the setting of the mechanism? What we see is that, uh, well, since it involves a lot of work relating to application and formulation of guideline, there is surely room for improvement. If we have an additional post to share the workload, it will be conducive to pr the um, processing of applications. Next, Mr. Ju Eddie Chu, five minutes. Thank you. A lot of members ask questions about this post because well, it's been over a year since uh, the enactment of uh, the law that we have seen some fundamental structural problems. So it's not really to do with this post. You may remember that, um, well, back in the 1990s when the town planning ordinance was extended to the new territories, the government encountered uh, similar problems. Existing use uses might not um, be in line with uh, the um, land use on the plan. But because it's an uh, existing use, they are allowed. But now, for existing niches, they can't simply continue to operate. They will have to go through an application process again. I think it's out of the government's expectations that uh, so many columbaria will uh, play dirty. Well, it's because uh, you did not expect the situation in which a lot of the a lot of columbaria is playing dirty. You have not addressed the risk issue. You said that uh, the uh, three hundred applications involving a hundred columbaria will be discussed by the com by the committee. But what about um, order of priority? Well, the one that is discussed first will have to furnish all the required information. Otherwise, the application will be rejected. Of course, uh, 
Well, I would uh, want to be the last of the 300 applications. Would there be some kind of uh, balloting uh, to decide the order of um, application submission? The first to go through the process will be the um, guinea pig. Uh, are you sure that there won't be any legal challenge? If you do not address the problems, if you do not pluck the loopholes, if you do not answer questions asked by members, there is no use to create 10 posts. Town Planning Board will convene meetings every week. It's running very smoothly, but for you, this one, you only have a meeting maybe once a month or maybe more than once every month. It's irregular. So can you explain to us, will there be any chance of a legal challenge? That, um, well, why should I be the first uh, to submit an application? I don't want to give you the documents yet. What are you going to do about that? We will be pragmatic. No matter how you set the deadline, it is impossible to process all uh, 300 applications for the licensing uh, board to decide. Let me put it very simply. Does the government have the power under the ordinance to set a uh, deadline for submitting documents? Well, every time we done them for required information, we will set a deadline. They are required to submit the information before the deadline. If they fail to do so, they will have to give us very strong justification before we give them an allowance. Well, uh, we will look at their track record. No, I'm not very familiar about the ordinance in this regard, so I'm not asking you. Are you given any tools or any trump card under the ordinance for you to actually take decisive information? Say, for example, you are empowered to set the deadline, so if you don't uh, do what you're required, then uh, the application will be rejected. If it is in relation to specifically about the setting of that line, it's not provided. But um, where well, all necessary power is given to the licensing board in order to enforce, uh, in order to perform their duties. Do you, do you think that they will have grounds to take out a judicial review against you in relation to the sub, sub, uh, submission deadline? We will be pragmatic. We will make a reasonable arrangement in accordance. Well, the law was endorsed on the 30th of uh, June um, uh, 2017. So far, only three licenses have been issued. People are not happy about progress, me included. As far as I know, that um, is something to do with uh, difficulties and um, sensitivity of uh, the applications because it involves planning, lands, uh, fire safety, etc. I don't think that uh, one, uh, one department alone will be able to deal with it. It is, this is about internment of uh, ashes of your ancestors, so it's a sensitive issue. So I'd like to ask, will there be professionals in other policy bureaus to provide you with the, uh, with the assistance you require? Well, there may be uh, unlo unauthorized building works involved, uh, land issued involved. So if you only have um, staff from the FEHD, it simply is not enough. Uh, quite a number of um, illegal columbaria may have to close down. I do support the creation of this post, but this is a supernumerary post that lasts till 2022. After licenses have been issued, you will have to tie up loose ends. You said that in the coming few years, there will be quite a number of unclaimed ashes. 
So shouldn't you create a permanent post instead of a supernumerary post? And I would like to ask uh, the um, bureau, the FHB. Well, this step is uh, this post is the creation of um, the head of um, private columbary affairs office but when but when it comes to um columbaria it's not just private ones there are also public ones as well so you need a dedicated team to um be responsible for the operation of supervision of the operation of public columbaria in relation to whether there will be professionals from other policy bureau to give us assistance well it may uh, involve um, land issues uh, fire safety issues and planning issues uh, we will refer to staff members of the respective area uh, we will sound them out to see if um, all, con all conditions and requirements are met this is a time limit time limited post uh, because for the tsol there is uh, the arrangement of three years plus three years a temporary suspension of liability so different things will have happen at different stages Before the expiry of the post, uh, we will take a review to see if we need to extend the period. What about the third part? I would like to supplement the question asked by Ms. Chan, that is uh, the management of uh, Columbaria. Well, this is in relation to man management. Well, there is a team about sixty people in the uh, in the affairs office. Uh, as we've mentioned, there are three tiers. Uh, this post uh, will be working in the second tier to assist in communication in relation to dealing with illegal columbaria. A lot of work has been done under the uh, district-based scheme in uh, Sandy Ridge, Tin Moon. Um, there are a number of uh, such works in the pipeline. According to the head of office, uh, you will ask um, relevant departments and bureaus about specific issues. Is it the case that you will have to write to other bureaus and wait for their answer? As a result, the uh, processing time will be lengthened. I have another suggestion. In the long run, well, it is not just about private columbaria. We need to have an office that uh, of that oversees all columbaria, private or not. Well, for um, building safety, is under the buildings department because they are the authority. We need to ask the uh, buildings department to see uh, whether these uh, columbaria are safe under the buildings uh, ordinance. We will continue to improve uh, the mechanism and the process. Please turn on Ms. Chan's microphone. Is this exactly because uh, there are no such professionals in the public uh, private columbaria affairs office that they have to ask uh, other departments and they have to wait for answers? As a result, they are more like messengers. So you do need to have uh, professionals from other policy bureau in the office to assist you. I understand what the member is driving at. What it, what actu what actually happens is that the, the department will be responsible for the res for the uh, specify for the for the for the specific area. Next, Mr. Yu Si Wing. Thank you. Well, I understand, as the head explained, that uh, you encounter a lot of problems. 
Well, um, when you deal with the columbaria, is actually a case of town planning. You also have to take into account uh, public views and or um, views of uh, operations or people who who are nearby. But what about uh, consumers that have uh, purchased niches? No matter what you do, uh, you will be criticized. You can't just uh, focus on explaining about the difficulties you have encountered. If you continue to do so, it will be difficult for the public to understand you. You need to expedite the processing of applications. I would like to ask a number of questions first. In relation to the applications of the hundred or so um, columbaria, will you cat classify them into different levels of difficulty? Say, for example, for some cases, as only um, a few documents missing, you will send a dedicated team to explain to them, to help them get all the uh, documents in order, and, li and to help them liaise with other departments to expedite the application process. Otherwise, it will be just like what other members have said. Well, um, some cases may not be complicated, but they are in the backlog. So, can you first deal with uh, easy, with um, easier to deal with applications first, and then you uh, send staff members to help the more complicated ones, so that at least we will have a dozen or licenses approved a year. The second question. Just now, the head of office said that the newly created post will be able to help. But then you you also said that it is not a, a problem with a manpower. It is more a problem with the uh, procedure. Then how can the post holder help expedite the application process? How can the post holder alleviate the, the workload? With the addition of this post, well, now there are a hundred uh, columbaria waiting to have the applications processed. So, uh, well, what do you estimate the um, progress will be with the creation of this post? I echo what the member has said. We do need to try to expedite application pr uh, process. We're doing everything we can to achieve that. In relation to dealing with um, easier cases first, if the applicant themselves have um, done their best. They have um, submitted most of the documents. Of course, we would hope that uh, they will give us all the documents so that a license or an exemption can be issued. Of course, uh, we would like um, the uh, workflow to be smoother. This newly created post will be able to help. When we deal with applications, uh, we may need to liaise with other government departments so that we can work together to find a solution. We hope that uh, the, post, the post will help. Regarding uh, the result of the creation of the post, well, it depends on how um, active the, appli the applicant is uh, to c accommodate and work with us. Well, currently it uh, involves uh, six to eight uh, departments. It's difficult for me to, at this moment, give you an undertaking uh, how much we will be able to improve um, the pro progress. I have a follow-up question.
are you going to meet regularly or would you convene whenever you have a case? Is there any room for improvement in terms of um, the arrangement of meetings? We have met 40 times already and um, for a lot of um, complicated issues, they are being handled by the board. And um, having established the meeting dates, we can um, go straight to the cases where needed so um, they are well prepared to deal with any cases. Mr. Lang Chang, thank you. After the private column barrier licensing board was set up and um, the trade and government seem to be um, clueless and um, now you are going to um, seek help in order to um, revive the industry. I think we need um, ample manpower support beyond the uh, head of the PCAO and your staff. The design of the legislation is also highly complicated and um, all operators are asked to um, make an application. Even the lands department cannot handle the workload. Of course, we hope to um, regulate these column barrier in an orderly manner. But um, nonetheless, you are facing a shortage of manpower and um, I certainly support this funding proposal. In terms of manpower allocation, um, the head is responsible for um, coordinating the enforcement of the ordinance. But according to the assistant um, director, You are only um, responsible for providing policy support and um, and also to um, help with certain cases in a flexible manner. So for um, column barrier that are unwanted or abandoned, um, they also have to deal with it. So the workload is rather heavy. So are you certain that um, one extra headcount would be enough? Going forward, you will face a lot of work. And um, so far, only three license applications were granted. How many um, licenses um, do you expect to grant? It is hard to make a call at this point. So the um, speed of processing the applications depend on um, when the applicants can furnish all the information required. Among the more than 100 applications, you only um, granted a, a few licenses. Those three column barrier operators furnish all the information. That's why we were able to grant licenses. Three operators have already withdrawn and as, as such you would um, prohibit them from operating. Is that correct? According to your paper, you said three operators have withdrawn their applications. Six operators have withdrawn as of now. So um, you would have to um, deal with the um, ashes and um, that would be handled by the assistant director, great staff. Um, the assistant director would um, conduct the um, supervision and our enforcement team will be responsible for providing guidance on the applications of the six um, operators who have withdrawn, four have returned ashes to the family members of the disease and work is underway for the two others. 
So do you expect the number to rise? Yes, we do expect more operators to withdraw. Like we said, for the um, non-compliant cases, they would be decided by the board. When the applications are rejected by the board, our enforcement team would um, supervise the, dis um, the disposal of the ashes by the operators. So you would have to um, have extra manpower on board as soon as possible. Dr. Fernando Chang. Apparently, um, we are stuck with this legislation. Apparently, some private columbaria might not be willing to fulfill the requirements and they might not want to invest either. We are looking at more than 100 private columbaria and um, there were 340 applications. So far, three licenses were granted. Of the 340 applications, how much longer would be um, required to um, complete the vetting? Are, are we looking at half a year, one year, or an even longer time? Thank you very much. Of the um, 300 odd applications, they involved 133 private columbaria. About 100 are uh, applying for the specified instruments. And um, according to the Development Bureau website, about 30 fulfill the planning requirements. In other words, 70 are yet to comply with the planning requirements. As we know, um, it takes time to um, receive permission from the town planning board. So for these um, operators, they have to submit all the required instruments, such as um, the temporary suspension of liability document, and they must um, furnish all the um, paperwork needed. For the um, TSOL, is there any um, time limit? According to the legislation, the um, TSOL would be effective for no more than three years and it can be renewed. And um, upon renewal or application for renewal, the appeal board would consider whether um, the private column barrier um, acted swiftly. Is there any time limit um, for applications for TSOL? If um, an operator um, delays um, for a very long time after filing an application, are you going to um, allow the application to drag on? If you do have a time limit, let's say um, the applicant might have three years after they file an application. So how many private columbaria would um, never be able to fulfill the criteria? At multi-story buildings or um, for columbaria at residential areas, we are beginning to vet these applications. If the um, TSOL is not um, attached with the application, the licensing board would reject the applications. Is there any time limit? Some of these private columbaria will close down one by one. For example, um, Ting Wai Ji, it will close down soon. Are you providing the necessary um, guidance and support? Some of these columbaria are very old and um, some would um, accommodate um, um, ashes after remains are um, cremated in the mainland. 
So would you prepare a set of guidelines in order to provide guidance on um, the handling of ashes after a columbarium closes down? For columbaria at multi-story buildings, we have sent letters to the operators if they um, did not submit the TSOL, the the board can reject the applications. As for the um, disposal of ashes, and um, having heard uh, members' recommendations last time, we have since prepared leaflets to columbaria operators so that um, they can inform the um, family members of the disease to on how they can handle or deal with the ashes. The um, ordinance, the private columbaria ordinance has been passed almost two years ago and only three columbaria received licenses and um, more than a hundred applications are outstanding and many people um, including members of the public find the progress too slow. I think there could be three possible reasons. One is manpower and that is why we are seeking to enhance the manpower and I'm certainly supportive. The second element is procedures. You have to provide some guidelines. The third element is whether the um, applicants are cooperative in um, submitting documents. And um, at the um, establishment um, subcommittee, I already um, gave my support to this exercise. You might be um, too optimistic when you um, submitted the proposal and now um, the manpower proposed might no longer be enough. For the PCAO or head of PCAO, um, despite your best efforts, you also need other departments to help. For example, the lands department, buildings department and planning department. I ask whether um, you know that um, these departments have the manpower and you said those departments um, never made such requests. And um, a lot of people in my sector have expressed the view that manpower is inadequate. There are calls to um, enhance the arrangement and speed up the process. You might say that the um, circumstances of each case are different, but at least you should come up with guidelines and the relevant departments should offer support. In terms of um, guidelines, for applicants, um, you are working on them at the moment, but if the applicants are not cooperative, um, they can resort to a lot of um, delay tactics. So in considering whether or not to renew their um, temporary um, license, then how would you gauge whether they are being cooperative or not? So I wonder whether you can offer more guidelines to the applicants or else they would just procrastinate. That would um, defeat the purpose of the ordinance, which is to regulate the private columbaria as soon as possible. So we should not allow this to drag on. So I wonder whether the um, government or head of PCAO are working on these three aspects. As for the um, creation of this D2 post, would, would it be conducive to such work? Thank you. 
in terms of procedures, I hope the new um, post can give us a boost. And um, a few years ago, the Food and Health Bureau um, secured extra resources and manpower for the department. And um, if there is further need for manpower, the Bureau would again provide support. In terms of um, application for renewal of TSOL, how can we judge whether or not an applicant is being cooperative or efficient? So um, in the first application for TSOL renewal, the licensing board would require the operator to provide an action timeline. For example, if they fail to comply with the town planning requirements, they have to say when they would fulfill them. So if they seek a renewal three years later, the um, PCLB would um, examine the timetable. Four members are waiting to speak. We have been on this item for an hour, and I have not heard any objections. I urge some um, members within the complex to come back to the conference room. Well, you have an objection, but I don't think um, anything we say would change that. Mr. Roy Kwong, thank you. I think um, we have really stalled when we talk about column barrier. Um, this newly created supernumerary post would have to take up this challenge. Can you tell us um, how um, many um, sets of ashes um, have been um, left um, straight, including um, pending applications? Well, we um, do not um, have any figures of such, and um, when we introduced the notification mechanism in 2014, um, we did some research at that time, and according to the results, there are more than um, 300,000 sets of ashes at private column barrier. As for the number of um, columbaria that fail to secure any kind of specified instrument, um, it is still an unknown yet. But um, at this stage, we do not have um, figures on the private columbaria that must um, return the ashes in the future. Well, the um, industry came up with a rough figure, of course, um, this number might not be acknowledged by the government. Let's say um, ten uh, 100,000 sets of um, ashes um, are left um, straight. And um, and according to a recent um, newspaper report, um, a columbarium in um, Hongham breached the requirements and um, they were either they were asked to um, cease operation or remove the ashes and the operator indicated that the um, deadline was too tight and the industry indicated that they are simply um, storing the ashes on a temporary um, basis so how much time are you um, providing the operators before they um, must remove the ashes. And according to the statutory procedures, um, the family of the deceased can um, collect the ashes within 12 months. So if operators comply with the laws, there is ample time to return the ashes. I do not know which um, report you were you were referring to, but according to the law, there is ample time. I believe it had to do with a um, type B or type C columbarium, and that is why um, they indicated that um, 
you should the government should show some empathy. So that is why I asked them how much time would they have to um, remove the ashes if they are found to be non-compliant. For the cases you mentioned, um, we are looking at two issues. There is another license of undertaker. If it is written in the license that they cannot inter ashes, then they would be flouting the conditions of that license. If they can't travel in licensing conditions, then um, they would be dealt with in another way. But if they have contravened the private column barrier ordinance, will act according to the conditions within the law, and they will have 12 months to clear away all the ashes. I may not have enough time, but let me also ask the question. We were very concerned about the case of cremation of abortuses. I don't know whether this is related to that policy. Uh, no, there is no relationship with that policy. We are responsible for private columbaria only. Uh, I will have other questions. Okay, Dr. Chen Chong Tai, five minutes. Thank you, Chair. I object to this application. All along, I have been of the view that the administration has not thought through all the implementation details, and that is why we are faced with such problems. I think you will remember that I was the only one rejecting the bill from beginning to end. Just now, the administration said that the PCLB had held 40 meetings in this period. What did they do in those meetings? Because you said that the applications were, were still outstanding. Mrs. Lai, in the process of application, people may have problems, and we need to seek the views of the PCLB. And the PCLB will have to conduct meetings in order to discuss how these problems can be resolved. Like last year, the PCLB carried out a very comprehensive and in-depth study, and we came up with a financial package that would protect the interests of consumers that was put together by the PCLB. And the PCLB indeed has to tackle many different issues. In other words, you are asking for this post, and part of the work of this post is to help implement the decisions of the PCLB to a certain extent. Can I understand it that way? Actually, anything that has to do with the implementation of the private column barrier ordinance would be the duty of this post. The PCLB is set up under the PCO. So when the PCLB executes its duty, it will always have something to do with the implementation of the PCO. Chairman, when the PCLB tackles these over a hundred applications, I like to know well, you may not have reports, but do you have information showing us why the applications are outstanding? You have experts on the PCLB. Now you ask for the creation of a supernumerary post. But then this is because you could not put your finger on where the problem lies, and this post will not have a lot of meaning. I'm asking whether the PCLB has consolidated the problems they are facing. Do you have a report telling us what those problems were in the last two years so that you need this post to tackle those problems? I don't think we have the information now, and that is why so many members are asking questions. Mrs. Lai, in processing these applications, very often the problems have to do with planning land structure fire services, the right to use the premises, and management of people and traffic flow, and other issues. Very often, these issues would differ from case to case. I think I can only give you this general answer. Chairman, if that's the case, then there is a problem in every aspect of the 
operation of the ordinance, whether it is the temporary suspension of liability or whether it is something to do with land or fire services. How can this post help your effectiveness and efficiency? I think that is our question. Any response? Very often, we require interdepartmental work. If someone can do the coordination work amongst different departments, we will be more effective in identifying the problems. This post will certainly help expedite the process. Well, if that's the case, you told us six applicants have withdrawn their applications. I'd like to know why they have chosen to withdraw. Why is it that um, they have not been able to submit uh, what documents? Well, this is the commercial decision of the operators. They have made the decision to withdraw and they did not need to give us any reasons. As long as they act according to the law and deal with the ashes interred with them, then they can withdraw the applications. Chairman, do you understand? Now we have the law and now there are requirements for people to come forward to apply for licenses. But now you cannot enforce the law, even if it has been passed. And now there are these failure cases. They have not been successful with their applications. Why is it that we cannot know why they have failed? Mrs. Lai, would you explain to the applicants why they have failed? Well, some applicants have said that they are not renewing the tenancy and they intend to wind up their business. I believe if you disallow an application, you would give them a reason, right? Well, but we are talking about withdrawing cases. No, I'm talking about rejection cases. Yes, if we reject the applications, we'll give them a reason. Say they have not submitted all the documents. Okay, Mr. Oh, not him. Chairman, this is my first round. Sometimes I think that using a licensing system to regulate certain operations will give rise to a situation where if the threshold is too high, the situation may not be satisfactory. At the establishment subcommittee, many members said that 70 odd operators have submitted applications for TSOL and you said they did not submit all the required information like the number of niches, fire services installations and also the overall plan of the premises. I know some of them are employing delaying tactics and according to the office written reply, it is said that if applicants for specified documents do not submit all the required documents for applying for the specified document, the PCLB intends to make a decision on such applications in due course. My question for you is, how long a time will you give to applicants to submit all the required documents? Will you say by a certain time you have not submitted the application so your applications will not be valid? In other words, will you give people a deadline? Well, Mr. Oh Not Hin, many other members have asked the same question but no direct reply was given. Head of office, maybe you can say again what you said. In that reply mentioned by the member, we were referring to columbaria in multi-story buildings. These would be the priority. And if they do not submit all the documents to support the application for TCOL, we will be holding open meetings in order to make a decision on such applications. We are now processing them. Chairman. I think we still want an answer, and that is how you would eventually complete the process. Say, for example, if you ask the housing department, the department will say, if you don't do certain things, uh, we will take action. This will allow applicants to know when they have to submit all the documents, and you should not allow them to 
continuously delay the process. Okay, now you tell me that you need to hold meetings to make decisions, and if you chase any applicants up for documents, how will you liaise with them if they pay no attention to your reminders? What will you do with them? Head of office, we write to them. So we have the record as to when we have issued letters to require documents. And then we will call them up to see whether they did not comprehend our requirements. And then our staff would do their best to see whether they did not understand our requirements. Now, what I mean is, you can continue to write them, and then the applicants will say they still have a problem. Well, I'm saying that the responsibility may be on both parties. You may not know the practical problems they are facing, but when you say you conduct meetings to process them, I just hope that you know how to deal with these cases. Is it that, on the one hand, departments may be making excessive requirements, that is why you cannot process some cases. And on the other hand, is it that these applicants are always employ employing delaying tactics because they know they will never be able to comply with all your requirements? I think you need to call it a day somehow. And that is, you should tell them that if you still cannot submit documents, will regard your applications as invalid, and then they will have to face consequences if they continue to operate. I think you have to put it in very clear terms. Thank you for your remark, Mr. Gary Chan. Thank you, Chan. Chairman, the licensing system seeks to protect the interests of consumers by stepping up monitoring and also to deregulate the application procedure for complying columbaria and I understand that this post seeks to expedite the application process but actually I have something to say about the application procedure in the last two years you have issued fewer than five licenses two or three three you issued three licenses within the period of two years. This is not ideal. People have not been able to queue up for public niches. And now that you have issued only three licenses, I'm sure the price of private niches have shot up. I hope that after this post is created for you, you can expedite the process. Many members said that perhaps the applications mainly come from type 2 columbaria and frankly speaking they may have a problem with the land lease and other problems and i don't think they will ever get a license so let us not have any false hope my question is rather about those that basically comply with all the planning, fire services, and other requirements. And I'm talking about type 1 operators. When they apply for licenses, they still face a lot of problems. To me, since I have been in contact with them, they have come to me for help. And they said that you were nitpicking with their applications. I still remember very um, clearly that Type 2 columbaria operators went to every department, and then every department passed the buck to others. And now Type 1 operators come forward, and then all the departments say, you have to comply with my requirements. And originally, the licensing board had wanted to issue licenses fast, but then in the end, you have only issued three licenses in two years. So are you helping things, or are you messing up matters. The PCLB should be a gatekeeper, of course, to protect the interests of consumers. But you must not forget the original purpose of the PCLB. You were trying to deregulate the process. 
Otherwise, private niches would continue to be expensive. If they comply with all the requirements, give them a license quick. When there is more supply in the market, the prices will come down. If not, the PCLB will be helping private columbaria to keep prices high, and this is not good for the public. I'd like to ask you, when you have this post, will you work by an indicator whereby from now on you can shorten the period for the processing of applications? Or can you let me know your performance indicator? Say you have completed processing three licenses. How can you streamline your work procedure? And can you give an undertaking as to how many licenses can be issued every year? Head PA PCAO, Mr. Chan reflected the views of certain operators, saying that the vetting criteria are nitpicking. Let me cite one particular aspect for your better understanding. Let us say fire services. Someone asked me, why is it that we have gone through town planning and we have got the occupation permit and fire services should not be a problem, then why is it that we still have to comply with other requirements when we apply for a license? I myself sought a deep understanding into this case. When the operator asked for planning permission from the town planning board, when the FSD vetted that application, it was done on the basis of that particular location or venue. Because town planning is about zoning. So FSD looked at the possibility of putting out a fire, etc. But then, um, also when the occupation permit was processed, it looked at the hardware, the structure, and also the environment in the vicinity. But now, it is applying for a license to operate a private columbaria. And the private columbaria would have been operated for a long time, and they would be adding in different facilities. And that is why the present structure is quite different from the original plan. And since so much time has passed, when the professional department studies whether it complies with fire services installations, the FSD would be able to identify structures that were not present when the original plan was submitted. And that is why different problems were identified. Mr. Eddie Chu, four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. I think now things are becoming clearer. In my view, the existing columbaria may on the one hand think that the requirements are too stringent or they just don't want to comply with the requirements. And then the administration should be quite worried because you are constrained. There are 300,000 niches. In fact, you can draw a line to say, by the 1st of May, if you don't submit all the documents, we will be rejecting all the applications. But you dare not do it because you have no way to deal with those 300,000 niches. If we apply the conspiracy theory, we will say that people know your weaknesses. And through delaying the process, well, some of them may be genuine in not being able to submit documents, but others may be deliberate. So, Head PA CAO, can I ask you this question? As a sector in general, is it that they would like the administration to do something? Well, in my view, A, they might want an amnesty from you, say grandfathering them, and B, for you to lower the requirements, and C, as you said, Mrs. Lai, if they contravene fire services installations and they tell you they have no money, does it mean that they want a subsidy from the government so they can then comply with the requirements? Is it that this is being suggested 
and in a way you know such aspirations and you are thinking of how to respond to them is that right because to me this post will not help you solve all the problems i don't know why some members may think that the post will help you boost efficiency i don't think it would hey, head of office well the creation of this post will definitely help but whether it is a solution to all i'm afraid not I don't understand. Well, can you explain to me uh, how it will help with the uh, creation of the post? It's not the case that a lot of people would want to operate, and uh, it's just that there is not enough equipment in the fact in the factory, thereby slowing down production. It's the case that they don't want any more entrance uh, to the into the factory. In the cases we are dealing with, well, there are some operators that uh, are doing their best uh, to try to meet all the requirements, and we deal with these applications as best as we can. As to whether there are some columbaria that ask uh, for a lowering of the re of the requirements, well, from time to time we have heard comments saying that um, the requirements are too stringent and it's difficult to meet all the requirements. The licensing board will follow the law and they will also make sure that uh, all the safety requirements are met. This is something that uh, we will stick to. Can we look at it this way? Say, for example, the town planning board. Well, they will look at the recommendations of departments in considering a case. But the recommendations will not uh, be the deciding factor of, for these cases. Please turn on Mr. Ju's microphone. Is it the case that uh, for um, the licensing board, they follow the same uh, practice as the town planning board. Of course, it, the operations will have to be safe, but they can exercise discretions because um, the um, licensing board has the final decision to make. There is some elbow room regarding safety. So you will not just um, uh, do everything by the book. There is elbow room. The power to decide whether uh, to, to grant a license is with the department. Other departments will give uh, their professional views to see if uh, the requirements within their uh, portfolio are met. There are voices saying that uh, so far only three cases have been approved. It doesn't reflect uh, whether um, we are too stringent or too lax in the approval procedure. There is no need to have any eligibility criteria if it is too stringent because no one will be able to get through. They will have the board will make a decision in accordance with the law. Dr. Cheng Chung Tai. I think uh, what's worst about this ordinance is that in relation to operations uh, in the grey area become oligopoly. Well, you are actually at the mercy of um, those who have already got the licenses how do we how do you resolve this we will have to tackle the root of the problem whether to face them out or to relax your requirements no offense i think well the uh, the post to be created is to help you shirk responsibility well, you may blame a lack of uh, manpower resources. N 
now we if we give you that post and uh, well everything is still in a mess you can say well it's because this newly created post doesn't help i think the crux of the problem is that the entire matter is unreasonable you try to uh, allow these illegal operations uh, to continue to operate try to regularize them well as a result that we have this oligopoly on the 29th of June 2022, this post will expire. Members of the licensing board will be replaced on the 7th of uh, September 2020. So the new members of the licensing board may work in a different way. In 2022, well, this post will have uh, three years to deal with the work. What if uh, there are still 100 outstanding applications? Do you have a plan B? What are you going to do? In reply to a question asked by another member, I have said that, well, before the expiry of this post, we will take into account this uh, the situation. We will um, review the situation to see if we need to extend this post. Let me just uh, give you more information for to help you understand. Well, say three cases will take one year. Let's say that uh, with this post, uh, you will have another team. So you have three years uh, till 2022. Let's say you can now deal with uh, 10 cases a year. So at the end of the three years, you will still there will still be about 80 to 100 uh, applications. If there is an outstanding uh, backlog of 100 cases, why do we have to give you this post now? We don't solely rely on the creation of this post to deal with everything. Of course, uh, we will f uh, try other ways to expedite the processing of applications. Do you understand my question? Let's say, uh, well, in the most optimistic uh, scenario, now we have a creation of post. Uh, Take it to our highest, 20 cases a year. That means there will still be half of the uh, uh, outstanding cases uh, left at the end of three years. So by 2022, even with the creation of this post, uh, you can't resolve, you can't complete all the applications. What are you going to do? Well, you mentioned about uh, other alternatives. What are they? We will support um, the proposal to create to uh, increase manpower. Let's see who else would like to ask questions. We have uh, Mr. Roy Kwong. Who else? If not, I'll draw a line here. After the mem these two members have asked questions, we'll put it to the vote. Mr. Ao Nokin, you're speaking for the first time, so I'll give you a bit more time. Mr. Ao, I don't want to be scaremongering. Well, but if um, the processing is so slow and too, and so protracted, then people will ask uh, one question. They will ask those who have got the license, how did you do it? And those people who helped um, these, with these applications, they become uh, a business. It has happened before, say, for example, for uh, uh, food licensing. There is a group of people who specialize in obtaining restaurant license for you. They will find many different ways to uh, try to get you a license, and they have to pay through the nose. With a high threshold, with such a long processing um, time, I think it is not desirable. 
Why do we have columbaria? Because of the demand and supply. Well, you you talk about um, uh, proportion and ratio. It is difficult for me to um, if come up with uh, an answer as to where what works and what doesn't. If in the end there are some outstanding applications that cannot possibly be dealt with. Then will you make arrangements for them to deal with um, the ashes interred, and and who will be responsible for them? Um, what do you have in mind in relation to the workflow? It involves uh, two different stages. First, well, um, at the end of the operation, a certain procedure will have to be followed. There will be proper supervision to make sure that operators will properly dispose of the ashes interred, say for example to uh, transfer them to those who have the power to deal with them. The office will deal with them. Information will be given to the operators uh, to, to, um, to f f for forwarding to uh, consumers to tell them information about uh, what other ways uh, there are to to dispose of the uh, ashes. Say, for example, an FEHD facility which charge you $80 a month. Well, if uh, it is a niche that is uh, allotted by the FEH, allocated by the FEHD or Chinese Permanent uh, Cemetery, well, then f family members can have their ashes interred in the same niche. Say, for example, there is already one allocated to someone who has passed away. Additional ashes can be interred in the same niche allocated by the FEHD or the um, Chinese uh, Permanent uh, Cemetery. When we monitor operators to dispose or return of ashes, information will be supplied to family families for their reference. There is a team under the FEHD um, that is responsible for provision of uh, temporary um, niches. Mr. Ray Chan, thank you. I know you have drawn the line. Well, I am very concerned about this. I think uh, this is a difficult issue for the head of office because uh, she is not able to answer our questions. Well, uh, the head may say that. Well, the logic is not is not that this year we've only um, processed three. Next year we we are only going to pro process um, another three. Maybe it's just like when you're tending a garden. Um, this this year you will, there are only three plants that have flowered. Maybe next year everything will bloom. I think uh, this problem has been plaguing us for a very long time. Last week uh, there are some protesters. After the protest, came to speak to me, asking me to lean on the government and. Uh, Columbaria, so that uh, there will be an early allocation of niches because um, they are being left in vacuum. There may not be a huge increase compared to last year, but um, you can't give the undertaking that all the applications will be completed. But I don't see uh, the correlation between the creation of the post and the um, speed of processing application. It's not because you're slow. It's because of the applicants not being able to fur furnish all the required information. Perhaps it's back to the starting point. You might have underestimated the complexity of the whole matter. 
you might have met the requirements of um, town of uh, of uh, town planning, but not for um, fire safety and others. And in the end, only only three applications have been processed. But you can't just um, leave it without uh, an ending without an end. Well, there may be an TSOL. There is still a deadline. You can't uh, give them an exemption or a temporary suspension of liability for ten years. For unscrupulous ones, there is plenty of time for them to abscond with the money. When I was asking questions in the establishment subcommittee, well, you might just uh, refer the uh, consumers uh, to the Consumer Council or to the Custom and Excise Department. Maybe you you can give a date to the to them. If you submit the information, but if you are unable to, or if you don't make an effort to furnish all the information within, say, nine or ten months, then your file will be closed and you and your application will be rejected. In this way, you can give them some pressure. Well, if they don't understand what is required. Will you just uh, it just leave everything to them, or will you, will there be someone there to help them? If we give you more manpower in this regard, will it speed everything up? There is a case manager for each case. And it's a contact point. If the if the applicant don't understand uh, certain information, then they can call us. How many case managers are there? We have sixteen. Would it be better if we give you more case managers? Of course, uh, more manpower is mostly is most welcome. Where you ask if applicants uh, would. Um, Sometimes not understand what's required, but there are case managers. If they don't understand uh, what requirements there are, they can uh, contact us. Regarding uh, like um, um, some professional uh, aspects, uh, we'll be able to liaise with them. Have you done any assessment about these cases? Please switch on the microphone for Mr. Chan. Uh, is it the case that they dawdle, or is it because uh, there is not enough time, or is it the case that uh, they are unwilling to invest more into the operation? Have you done any assessment as to when the file should be closed? In relation to multi-story operations in residential area, we have already sent them letters. If they can't furnish information for a uh, temporary suspension of liability, if they don't meet the requirements, uh, we will ask uh, the um, the the board to consider to make a decision. We have already started dealing with these cases. There is a one thirty seven A motion. We'll deal with that before we put it to the vote. Do we need to ring the bell? Five minutes. It's a division bell. Now please uh, show the. Um, Wording, Mr. Eddie Chu. Thank you. This uh, committee would require the uh, administration uh, to come up with um, with an option three months after the creation of this uh, post, um, uh, so, so that um, well uh, there can be some progress in relation to the slow processing uh, effort on the part of the office.
睇一睇大家咧，我以即將表決咧，係咪大家 team members？ We are about to vote to decide whether or not we deal with this motion moved under Rule 37A. Voting begins. Voting is closed. The results are shown. Fourteen for twenty-seven against. No abstention. The item is vetoed. We now put、um, FCL twenty eighteen to nineteen number eighty-nine to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hands. The, the bell will be rung for five minutes.
好啦，请大家现在开始表决啦。Voting begins. Voting is closed. The results are shown. Thirty-six for two against four abstentions. The item is carried. We are almost at the two-minute, two-hour mark. We will now take a ten-minute break.